ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Jenkins. What's up? How's it going, buddy? <laughs> eh, pretty good. How you doing? Doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. I'd say people are really thrown off right now <laughs> with everything going on. But hey, man, the Walnut Festival is going on, and we're kicking off the fun here early. Hey, it's October. Everybody's going crazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I think it's just the times that we live in, man. Oh, that, that, that's what's driving everybody crazy. You have to be crazy to exist in today's world, almost. Oh yeah, you gotta just have fun with it. Go, roll with the changes. Exactly, and that's a good Ario Speedwagon song. Yeah, by the way, <laughs> actually, probably my favorite Ario Speedwagon song. Yeah, I believe it's mine, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I just I love the piano in it. That yeah. that build up and oh, man, whoo, Neil, Neil, he does a good job yeah, on the yeah. keys there. So you've had them in here, ain't you? Yeah, well, yeah. we we always do big interviews over the phone and stuff like that. So that guy see this ugly face. Maybe this will help if I start dressing like this for every interview. I've been keeping up with you last two, and I'm like, I, I kind of feel privileged to even be sitting here. <laughs> ah, nah, man, that ain't nothing. Alice <laughs> Cooper, Michael Myers. To, hey, to me, everybody is equal. Hey, we ain't nobody's better than anybody. But Alice Cooper, he, yeah. <laughs> Alice Cooper's Alice Cooper. And, and and Tony was still cool though too, man. It's yeah. no, it we're we're trying, we're trying. We're set. This is going to be seventy one episodes in, and we're finally starting to get somewhere with this. Awesome. Well, it, it's seventy one when we started counting. Oh we, yeah. There, there, we done several before that we never even numbered because we didn't know what we were doing. Still don't know what we're doing. <laughs> but it's 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 taken a while. But you know, good things happen to uh, people that try to do good things. Oh yes. And speaking about good people doing good things, the Walnut Festival coming up this weekend, man. Yes, third annual Walnut Festival. I, I haven't got a chance to uh, make it out to this one yet, and I'm going to try my best to be there this Saturday because, man, y'all have a lot going on, it looks like. I, I kind of got a late start on the the lineup. I was like two weeks ago before I was even contacting anybody because I wasn't for sure, you know, how everything was going to play out. Yeah. But... Uh, I was dying to get like laid back, but he was going to be in Whitesburg that night and a couple more. But they're promised for next year, and next year we're actually going to try to do like kind of a couple big country acts. Nice. Like, so we're going to try to get bigger and better each year. Nice, man. Nice. Yeah, I've, I've seen a few people asking about laid back, but you know, with uh, you're a musician yourself, so you know, everybody's just trying to uh, get everything going now that stuff is finally starting to open back up a little bit. Yeah. At a time. So everybody's... It, it's, it's good to see people getting booked. Sorry that's giving you kind of a rough time with the Walnut <laughs> Festival. But, man, I mean, well, you still pulled it off, though, dude. Yeah. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at it right now. you got people... Well, first off, Rebecca Lynn Howard. Yeah. You know, that that's it's a good catch right there. And she's from the Salyersville area, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. I went to school with her and all that. She's two-time Grammy winner. <laughs> oh, you went to school with her? Like, yeah, Like, were you all yeah. in the same uh, graduating yeah, class Yeah, well, I actually have played the... Played with her, uh, played the guitar with her in eighth grade. I can remember the first song playing with her was uh, Patty Loveless. I can't remember the exact song, but uh, On Down the Line is the song Living and Dying, mm -hmm. Laughing and Crying on Down the Line or whatever. But yeah, she used to do little talent things in the lunchroom and the gym and all that stuff. Then all of a sudden, boom, she's gone. <laughs> yeah. So, sometimes that's, that's how it happens, though, man. And, you know, congratulations to her on all her success. And it's cool to see her doing stuff like this for her hometown. You, you see big yeah. artists like that sometimes forget where they come from. Yeah. So it's good to see somebody like that that hasn't forgot. Yeah. And, I mean, heck, you got two lanes home, the Midnight Promise. Big shout to Dustin Hoover. Love Dustin, man. He, oh, yeah, great great Dustin. dude. Nathan and Chessie. And also, well, this looks familiar right here, Eddie Jenkins and the 606 Band. Yeah. Uh, well, 606 Sound. So. This is actually uh, when I've done the Wolfstock a couple, how long has that been? Been about a month ago? Something like that. Wolfstock, I kind of put together a country band to feature my original songs, the country ones that I write. And we kind of gelled so good that we decided to give it a shot and start playing. <laughs> hey, nice, man. And Rick V. Johnson on the pedal steel. And I've, I'm always crazy about the pedal steel, even like, you know, wear the hats and all that. I can't play pedal steel. I don't see how anybody can. But I love the sound. I mean, it's yeah. just that good, lonesome sound. Well, I mean, if you want to do, like, if you want to have that right country, you no know, rock 
sound. Yeah. You have to have a pedal yeah. steel, man. And whew, it just sounds so good when it's done right. Yeah, I got uh, Rick Johnson. Then I have uh, Mike Howell on the bass. If you've not heard of Mike, he's played for yeah. years, and he's one of the old school guys, and he's awesome. And I've got uh, Marty Howard on drums and his brother Ricky on keys. And I got Doug Russell playing acoustic and harmony, singing harmony. And then there's me. I'm pretty sure that's all. <laughs> I think I got everybody. But still, man, like y- y'all have a lot going on. What all is happening at the Walnut Festival? Uh, we have like a little mini circus petting zoo for kids. Nice, and nice. I think we're going to have face painting for kids. We're going to have a cruise-in car show. I reckon there's supposed to be like a lot of cars coming in. And we're going to have music from 11 to about 9. And there's some artist that's not featured on the flyer that come in after I made the flyer. Hmm. And so they're going to be like probably maybe about six more. But it'd be just like local people that's, you know, that they want, you know, like playing like there's a girl going to be playing um, keyboard. And then uh, Whitney Lovely is going to be singing. She's from Ralton. She's really great. Nice. But, uh, yeah. I mean, really, dude, y'all have a lot going on. What Do you know what type of animals are going to be in the petting zoo? I do not. I do <sighs> know that there is, it's going to be several different ones. It ain't just going to be like, you know, a little goat or a horse. <laughs> but they're going to have some exotic stuff. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, man, it, it's cool to see, you know, everything kind of getting back to normal the best that it can. And I've heard a lot of people talking about the Walnut Festival, too. The, the first two that y'all have done, I've heard that went great. And oh, third the, time's a charm. The food is awesome, too. Uh, there's a woman over there that's called the Cheesecake Lady. And she has a booth where she makes these different, I mean, it's like boutique. <laughs> she mm. can make all the good cheesecake, just all different flavors and all that. you got to come try that. And I think we're going to have about seven or eight food booths barbecue just anything you can think of nice also vendors we're going to have about 20 plus vendors i think maybe that's setting up selling walnut stuff and you know it's kind of like a mini like a mini sargon festival or apple day or something like that so where does the walnut festival take place at royalton kentucky it's up route seven and it's where the south mcgolfin elementary school is if you turn into the entrance to the South McGoffin Elementary School, you'll turn right, and there's a big field there, and there's a little uh, road that goes around. You can see it right. If you find the school, mm-hmm. GPS the school, you will find the Walnut Festival. And I think it's called the Randall Reisner Memorial Shelter. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure that's what they call that. It's a good name. It's a dang good name. <laughs> yeah, Randall Reisner was also was a... Uh, guy like a, he's a local historian he was a kentucky colonel and all that he recently he's he passed away mm. but uh he was crazy about the his home in Ralton and all that and done his best to promote it do you know how the walnut festival got its name like i like walnuts but i didn't know they based a whole festival around it i think they said what kind of festival is there not in kentucky <laughs> and they're like well <laughs> We got walnuts, and there's, I don't think there's a walnut festival. Why don't we just call it the Walnut Festival? Good name, though. <laughs> I mean, good name. It has, it has a good twang to it. Yeah. Walnuts, I love them, man, but pretty hard to eat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should we got to get those, uh, I guess it's a clamp. I don't know if there's yeah. like a special fancy name for it. But, yeah, as a kid, I remember like eating one of my first walnuts and i thought it was just like any other type of nut you just like probably crack it with your teeth or something like that and yes president will lose any trying to do something like that the first person to ever eat a walnut had to be really dedicated to try to get that (laughs) they probably watched some squirrels and they're like well they they seem to be pretty happy eating that let's try it Uh, and 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 they are delicious And, and like right around this time of year too it's always like the fall winter time whenever you're hearing of walnuts nobody i don't think anybody eats walnuts in the summertime no it's like a, it's fall we gotta make some fudge and put some walnuts in it yeah it's good though man it, it, it's real good see down i, I uh, lived in georgia for quite some time and down there it was pecans for us yeah. well y'all 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 yankees call them pecans pecans yeah so weird 
Hey, well, I mean, it puts an H is on it, and I'm playing around anybody who's offended by that. Y'all, I know y'all ain't Yankees, but still, <laughs> it's it's. I've, I've just spent my whole life calling them pecans. Yeah, but some people call them pecans, just like the whole uh, caramel caramel yeah. thing. What do you say? Caramel. Me too. Me yeah. too. Um, and and if anybody wants to argue about this, then I've I'm ready. Okay, you can uh, YouTube a Dove chocolate commercial, and they say caramel yeah. in in the commercial. So even Dove chocolate agrees with me and Eddie Jenkins on this one. But uh, I'm I'm kind of a hillbilly, so every now and then I might just say caramel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we we got our own way of talking around here. When, whenever I well I grew up in a. Uh, the Richlands, Tazewell, Virginia area, till I was about six years old, and I moved to Georgia till I was about thirteen, and then came here to Kentucky and just been here ever since. So I'm a lot more of a hillbilly than I am a flatlander. Yeah. But whenever I first uh, moved here, man, I learned a few things. Like yeller, I'd yeah. never heard yeller before, and it took me a little while to figure out what that was. That and uh, and mater. Yeah. Tater and Mater. <laughs> and, and now I, sh- I say that stuff all the time, man. I, y'all gave me that little bit of hillbilly twang. Yeah. Go get that horse rag. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's cool to live in this place, though, because it's so unique. You know, you, you don't hear the term like wa- wash rag yeah. anywhere else. You go to California and say something like that, they, they think you're speaking a different language probably. Get you a book uh, that's not been that's been written exactly, not translated or improved edition or whatever. Get you a book from like the 1600s of old English. Yeah. And look at and Appalachia's speaking the true old English actually. <laughs> yeah, and, and I watched a uh, documentary. Dang, what was it called? I posted about it on Facebook a few. This has been about a month or two ago, so I can't remember. It was on YouTube, and I'll try to post it again to my Facebook for anybody who wants to watch it. But it was like a uh, a documentary about Appalachia. Very, very well done. But it looked like it was from like the 90s or 80s, but still very, very yeah. well done. And they were talking about that, and that was something that I learned. Because a lot of the people that settled in this area were, you know, like the, the, the Irish and the English and those of you that, well, those that you were talking about, spoke yeah. that old English language. Yeah. So what people think is just hillbilly, stupid gibberish. Yeah. No, that's actually how they talked back then. Mm-hmm. So in a way, all the the Yankees and city folk out there, y'all ain't speaking it the right way. We're the ones speaking yeah. it the right way. We're right. actually speaking the English language. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> that was just, it was it was so cool to uh, find that out. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's fun to watch documentaries like that. And it makes you uh, appreciate our area and its people and the differences that we have from everywhere else in the United States. It makes you appreciate it a little bit more. Oh, I love it. Love my home. Yeah, man. It's, <laughs> and, and, you know, in, in Salyersville, it, it's, it's great to see the uh, progress that that town has made as well, you know, especially with the, the tornado that uh, wreaked all that havoc a few years ago. That was heartbreaking mm-hmm. to see all of that. And now whenever I drive through that little strip there in Salyersville, buddy, it's, it, it's just so good to see all the new businesses that they yeah. have coming in there and all the work development that they have going on around the area. The, 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 the road work is still a little bit of a pain in the butt at times, yeah. but the, it's, it's, for, it's for a good cause, and I totally yeah. understand. So all the guys and gals out there working on the roads, thank you for all that you do. But, you know, Salyersville is just on the up and up, and that is such a great thing to see. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about the, your new acquired record collection? Man, for for the people that don't know what Eddie is talking about, I guess it was like week before last or yeah. something like that, buddy. Time and days and weeks, they don't mean anything to me anymore. It just it all blends together. But a few weeks ago, I guess, me and Eddie Jenkins met at McDonald's there in Sayersville, right beside that new fancy gas station that they have, yeah. which I went inside, by the way. They have boiled peanuts. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Well, I've never first, ate those. 
oh, they're delicious. And that's something that I, I grew up eating, and I've never seen at a gas station around here until that one. So whatever, I, do you know, what's that gas station called? Speedy's. Is that the one you're talking about? I guess it's the new one. The it's new like fancy the cedar one. side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Speedies. yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Big shout out to Speedy's for having yeah. boiled peanuts. But anyways, uh, we, we met beside that gas station right there in the Walmart parking lot, and I bought several, several, probably dozens of records off of Eddie <laughs> Jenkins. And, man, thank you for all that. Dude, Johnny Paycheck, Janice Joplin, Leonard Skinner, Merle Haggard, Dwight Yoakam, I, you name it. If yeah. Good country music and good rock and roll, it was in there. So, Eddie... Thank you, man. <laughs> I, I've been driving my wife crazy, Honestly, but, yeah. but I have been absolutely enjoying it. I think I actually need to get like a new record needle because I've been listening to so many. <laughs> so, thank you, man. How did you acquire all those I, records just over I just, time? I, I love to go to little flea markets and Goodwills and all that. You won't believe the stuff I find at Goodwill. I mean, I found a uh, first... Printing Sun Records, Johnny Cash, first album uh-huh. at Goodwill for 99 cents. <laughs> Man, I found that's sealed Paul McCartney and Wings, their first album. Sealed. Oh, I found wow. uh, Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here, sealed. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Wait, which Goodwill do you go to? I need to start going to this Goodwill. You just got to be a thrift town. You got to go to everywhere and then... You never know. And then the people usually that works there, when you set it on the counter, they they look at you like, how did I miss that? <laughs> did, I, did I not work that, that shift when this was put out? <laughs> I, I went to the Goodwills here around the area, and every once in a while you'll find something. But sometimes, man, it's just in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I went to this one. Uh, <laughs> it was like an antique shop in, uh, in Hawkinsville, Georgia. That's where I grew up there in Georgia. Just a little antique shop. My folks wanted to go to it and look at furniture and all that fancy stuff. And they had a record collection in there. I'm like, oh, I'm, 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 I just wonder what they have. And, buddy, I got the original Pink Floyd's The Wall, almost mint condition, beautiful. Whoever had it took very good care of it. And Leonard Skinner's Second Helping. Yeah. And, all, and, and just a little old antique shop that, not a lot of people were stopping in at the time. You never know when you're going to find where you're going to find amazing records. Mm, no. And all these kids nowadays just downloading stuff off their cell phone. They don't even know what no. we're talking about. You don't know the thrill of finding Paul McCartney's wings sealed at Goodwill. It's <laughs> man, like downloading. It's like it's convenient, I guess, but the thrill about finding that album in just a little old shop. It's 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 like a Christmas morning feel to a little kid. Oh, it's it's like uh, the Forty ers in San Francisco back in the eighteen when it was forties or whatever, panning for gold. It'd drive them mad because they they know it might be three or four days, and then they'd find just a little nugget. <laughs> yeah, ex- yeah, exactly, man, exactly. And a big shout out to Alex coming in with the win. Mountain Talk. That's the yeah. documentary that I was talking about. Talk. How he knew that. I have no idea, but thank you, Alex. You are the man. Pretty but Mount- sure I've seen that, yeah. It's a great documentary, and, and for free on YouTube as well. Yeah. So uh, it it's, don't cost you anything. Go check it out, folks. So whenever it comes to the Walnut Festival, how much is it to get in? Zero. Ooh. <laughs> Heard that, ladies and gentlemen. All free. Nice, man. That, that's, that's, well, a, that's a beautiful uh, thing you got You've got to get you something to eat. you got to pay for that. they got to pay for their time coming, but... Besides that, to enter into the Walnut Festival, enjoy everything, it's free. Nice. What, uh, so you're talking about the food vendors earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what type of uh, food are we going to have down there? Uh, Jack's Barbecue. He's a great local guy from Sayersville. He's going to be there. I'm pretty sure the Rainbow Girls, which is an organization over at, tied to the Masonic Lodge, they're going to be there selling some goodies. Uh, the Cheesecake Lady and... The Lunchbox. That's some local I've heard of there. the Lunchbox. They've got some good stuff. And then a couple more I can't think of right now, but uh, it's really good. Cheesecake sounds good right now. 
about every hour I'm in between because I'll be setting people up and all that. I'll be running over and grabbing something from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love to find uh, any, any fried alligator at these festivals. Hopefully somebody over there has some fried alligator. Man, oh, yeah. that is some good stuff. I, I've been seeing where there's a, a thing that's coming around locally where you can they have stuff like that and you can buy it in bulk. Like you can go and buy so many pounds of alligator or so many pounds of uh, some kind of rare fish that's from Alaska or something like that, and they're they're setting it up. I don't know. I've just I've, I've just saw it on that. Facebook one day. They was going to be in Paintsville or Prestonburg. I'm like, and they Dang, sell. I would have known about. They sell that. like gumbo by the quarts or by the gallon, like or Love gumbo or um, etouffee, just stuff like that, just jambalaya, that all that. What's a two fate? I don't really know. <laughs> you know. Cajun is my favorite food, though. Yeah, I, I love the the spicy seafood type stuff. It is good. I love gumbo. That's probably yeah. like the only style of Cajun food that I've had that I'm aware of. I got a buddy that lives down there in Louisiana right now, and man, he posts so many pictures about them just making a big gumbo pot. Yeah. I get so jealous. Oh, it looks so good. Well, see the company I work with. Uh, Whenever there's a hurricane, we usually have to go to Louisiana and to put the power lines back up and all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't there, but one year they was, I think it's called Avery Island, Louisiana. It's mm-hmm. a certain little island past New Orleans. And it's where they make, uh, there's two or three companies, like that's where they make Tabasco. And I think they make Louisiana Supreme there and a couple more hot sauce. Hmm. But I reckon... Working in the area, you can't breathe or anything because of the, <laughs> like the fumes from the hot pepper. Like you're just walking around like you're, like you, your nose running and sneezing and all that. Well, that's probably why they talk the way that they do yeah. down there because their their vocal cords are just <laughs> drained from smelling all the fumes. They they probably just have a very <laughs> low immune system. I don't know what's going on down there. Oh. I, I, what's that one show, the alligator hunting show? Swamp, oh, swamp people? people. Is that yeah. what it's called? Swamp people. That one dude on shoot there. Him, right? Shoot him, Libba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it, I know that people think us hillbillies. We talk funny. Yeah. Them Cajun people, they got a language of oh, their own. And watch that show, and watch when one of them gets mad or something, or gets aggravated, and they start. They go really into it. You know, then they. <laughs> It really comes out. I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> they had to have subtitles on that show. Yeah. Right? Well, I bet even the people that do the subtitles back in the studio are like, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> oh. No disrespect to anybody in Louisiana. Oh. Y'all make amazing food. We're just having fun. Yeah. But, man, they, they do they like, literally their own language. Ain't it like something to do with like something Frenchy? Yeah, or it's something? French and what do they call it though? Creole, well, that's the food, but I think that's a like a cultural thing too, ain't it? Creole. It sounds nobody's here it's to tell like us we're French wrong. mixed with uh, African voodoo or something. I don't know. Whoa, <laughs> I'm gonna start looking into Louisiana <laughs> yeah. more. Well, Cajun, Cajun is is it based just in Louisiana? Like the whole I think Cajun so. accent? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's its own place. It's man. weird because you got French Canadian. You got up here in Canada. It's totally different than the southern part of the United States. Yeah. You go to, to Maine, right at the tip of Maine, where you're going into Canada and Quebec and all that, everybody's French, different accent than Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> Man, they they are beasts down there. Like the Louisiana people, they're just their way of life. Yeah. You know, the, the things that they've had to overcome. And these people... Don't eat alligator for fun. Like, that's just what they've had to do yeah. over the years. Can you imagine, like, living in a place where you have to kill dinosaurs <laughs> to be able to survive? Yeah. Louisiana, man, like, and the heat tough there, people. it's the, the humidity there is, like, triple here. On a day here when it's, like, 100 degrees and you're like, oh, man, I'm sweating to death. So sticky, muggy, hot. They're like that at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Alex brought up a good point. He uh, <clears throat> was talking about how voodoo is like really popular yeah. in the New Orleans area and something like that. So it may be something to it. Actually, the last song I wrote is uh, about a voodoo witch. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you need to move down to Louisiana, oh, have, the, have the Walnut Festival down there. Yeah. I, you know, who knows, man? Like, who knows? If, do you believe in voodoo stuff? 
Uh, kind of. See, I'm, I'm kind of scared to like talk crap about it. Like, um, <laughs> Why don't let anybody cast a spell on me? Like in Appalachia, we call it kind of hoodoo. And yeah. uh, it's kind of mixing, mixing like old stuff mixed with Christianity here. Yeah. It's like uh, like the stuff like different. I can't think of anything right now exactly, but because I, I read up on this stuff. I don't know what they call it. They call it. There's a certain word for it. Mm. I've it's heard like, it's like the, before. Like the the where you do the rods to find graves, and where you you, you ever heard of that? Mm-mm. Uh, see, I think it's called divining rods. What? Wait. So what is it that you use? You to find can graves? find. You're supposed to be able to take these two like sticks or two like little metal rods made out of a certain like, maybe iron or something, mm-hmm. and to find where a grave is or to find where water is. You walk just holding these, and they will cross when you get over top of it. Does it work? Yeah, I've actually seen it. <laughs> I've actually seen it work. Wow. And I don't know why it would do that, but I'm pretty sure they call it the, it's divining rods, divine rods, or whatever. There's a certain, you got to get them, they're, they're shaped kind of like an L. This uh-huh. side's about two inches, and it's like a big long. And then as you walk along, you can find water, you can find... I've seen people. I've seen people find graves where graves located. I wonder it. how that works. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people said it's you know it's witchcraft. It don't work, and you know you're just you know yeah. you're practicing witchcraft if you use that. So I don't know. You know, man, I just think that whenever it comes to these old ways of doing things, and you know, like people talking about hoodoo and voodoo and witchcraft and stuff like that, maybe. The people back in the day just knew stuff that we didn't, you know. I I think that there's a lot of distractions nowadays with social media and just like life is so busy for people nowadays. And it wasn't that way hundreds of years ago. You had a lot more time on your hands and everything wasn't so hectic and you wasn't having to focus on everything at once. You didn't have five news channels to flip through. And I just think that... The old folks were a little bit more in tune with I think the, with, with the land I think and this is the, the human dumbest generation in their ever mind. in existence. Yes, the the <laughs> stupidest. Well, like the dumbest. Including myself, smart, I ain't talking about nobody. You know. Well, well it, it really is like the the smartest, dumbest generation to ever live. Mm-hmm. But like they're 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 smart in the ways of technology, yeah. but they're dumb in just common sense with real life. And but you know you you hear of like these old ways of doing things like how they uh, what, what's the type of tree that has the same exact medicine as a uh, Tylenol in it? Is it a widow tree? Willow. 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 It's so aspirin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. aspirin. That that that's yeah. it. You know, like how did they figure that out back then? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That you can just chew on this bark, and it heals a headache. You know. <laughs> Don't know. I mean, like, I, I remember talking with my grandmother growing up, and if something was wrong with me, she's like, well, walk up this hill about three-fourths of a mile. There'll be this plant here. You get yeah. that root, put it in a tea, and yeah. cures cancer or something. Like, I yeah. mean, like, it's really out there stuff, and that's what I'm saying. I, I just think that the people back in the day, they knew stuff about the real world and real life that – Maybe we've lost over the years. So whenever it comes to this voodoo and hoodoo and witchcraft and stuff like that, who knows what yeah. they were capable of back I'm big then. into that now, the herbal teas and stuff. It is good. And uh, you, every one of them you'll see, not approved by the FDA. And w- you know why? Why? Because if we could heal ourselves, why would we need big pharma? <laughs> true. Very true. Well, I mean, and, and people nowadays, like, they've just... You know, the pills became more convenient. Yeah. If somebody was sitting in Walgreens and Walgreens told them to go chew the bark of a willow tree, they're like, yeah. what are you talking about, you maniac? Yeah. <laughs> but but no, that's what you actually done back in the day. Yeah. It's just a different time to be alive. Alex said a dowsing rod? Dowsing, that's it. Nice. Thank you, Alex. I'm telling yeah. you, he's the man. Alex is the bomb. You got to check this out. Um, gotta that's weird. <laughs> research dude. a little bit into this. That's weird. 
But, you know, like, like I said, who knows? So that's why, like, whenever it comes to witchcraft and stuff like that, I know that a lot of people are skeptical about it. But I think that I don't know what's possible in this yeah. world. The, the, the life is so complex <clears throat> and so weird that I don't put anything past nothing. To me, anything can be possible. Some of the stuff that I'm seeing nowadays I thought would be hundreds of years in the future. But no, here we are. And I just don't think that our dumb human minds in 2021 can ever grasp what is actually possible in this world. No. I mean, people have, are, talk about different dimensions and you know, just really out there stuff like that. And apparently, I'm not smart enough to understand it, but science has proven that other dimensions and stuff like that exists. So, who knows? All the writers from D.C. were correct back in the day, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the multiverse. Yeah, I'm, and, and, you know, who knows? And who knows what the government is capable of in accessing some of this stuff? Yeah. There, there's I know, I know a few drugs and stuff can get you that way, and they're looking into stuff like that. But whenever I... I, well, back in the day, uh, well, it was MK Ultra yeah. that the government was working on, right? For the people that don't know what MK Ultra is, <clears throat> it was a mind control experiment process, whatever you want to call it, that yeah. was done by our United States government mm -hmm. and probably other ones around yeah, the world yeah. as well, yeah, on just normal, everyday people. And they done some very heinous, evil things with people to try to control the human mind. And it was a, a discontinued, I think that's the word yeah. that they use. Or, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. But 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 the, the other thing, day Facebook went down for a couple of hours. And but who knows crazy. like what who knows what they figured out. Yeah. You know? They they try to say that like, oh well, it was a failed project or whatever. I don't know. You know? I mean like you, you hear like sleeper agents yeah. and stuff like that in in movies and stuff like that. But who knows? Like like what if they come on the radio or TV one day and they say applesauce butter cake pink, and then all of a sudden just everybody turns into robots and does who knows what? Yeah. Who who knows what the government figured out with that project? I wonder what they've they done some weird stuff with MK Ultra. I wonder what they figured out with Antarctica in 59 when 50-some uh -huh. countries signed a treaty to not allow nobody to go there unless they get their permission. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. that's, that's a fascinating thing to look into. Now, what I'm about to say is, is a little <laughs> bit out there, and I don't know if it's true. Bring, I, bring. I'm, I'm, I'm very 50-50 on it. And uh, some of my buddies that were on the podcast a few months ago was telling me about this. I thought that they were crazy at first. But uh, then I started looking into it myself, and... Like I said, I'm still skeptical. I don't know for 100% sure. But people say that there is a portal to the inner earth in yeah. Antarctica. And that sounds so crazy. But there was this uh, guy in the military. His name was Admiral Byrd. Very yeah. decorated war hero. Like, people looked up to this man. He was very, very well respected in the United States military. And he even said that he went in there <clears throat> and then all of a sudden I don't ever really remember what happened with him I think there was a few things that like oh he was killed off or whatever I can't exactly remember how uh, Admiral Byrd how that story ended but it was a very fascinating claim that he made and this was when he was a very well respected admiral in the military so who knows what's going on in Antarctica but why can't anybody visit there? See, that's the that's the thing, man. Like, like whenever you start getting secret, that's when people you. got questions. You know? Have you read Genesis in the Bible? Yeah. Okay. There's a part where it says that when they drove him out of the Garden of Eden, he set up a cherub with a flaming sword to guard the entrance of that forever. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> You're just saying. Mm. <laughs> you never know, man. You never see. There's there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that like I like yeah. to think about, you know, and, and I don't 
I'll, I'll talk to you to it off air because <laughs> s- s- some people get a, a little bit yeah. upset whenever you start in whenever you start with your own yeah. interpretations. Yeah. But I just do think that there's a lot of stuff in there that you have to think about mm-hmm. a little bit, and you wonder exactly what they're trying to say or what they're talking about. Because like, how, how old is like 2,500 years old yeah. or something like that? Life was totally different back then. And, you, and and not just the Bible either. You hear of these other ancient cultures that talk about the uh, – what, what is that one group of people that uh, that came from the skies, the the Anaku? Uh, uh, yeah, the like I- Inaku, Inaku yeah. people or something like that. Yeah. And they are talked about in quite a few ancient texts yeah. from different parts of the world. Yeah. And you just – like you, you start to think like – this many people can't be wrong. This many people can't be crazy, <laughs> yeah. especially whenever you're hearing of the same events from different parts of the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who knows, man? I just, like I said, this life is so weird that like whenever it comes to conspiracy theories, I'll listen to them, and I do not try to talk down to anybody besides flat earthers. I don't think that... <laughs> who knows? Who knows? I guess I'm a little bit skeptical, but I'm 99.99% sure that yeah. the Earth isn't flat. Yeah. But what, like with everything else, you know, you know, a, a story like Epstein. If you would have tried to talk about something like that ten years ago, yeah. nobody would have believed you. Oh, the <clears throat> elite have this special island that they go and do terrible stuff at and there's this one guy that works for the cia that tries to get all the dirt on him and they get him to do these bad things so they can have that dirt on him no there's no (laughs) such thing as that well there was and then all of a sudden he gets arrested goes to prison the guards fall asleep nobody's guarding him all the cameras in the prison all of a sudden there's a technical issue and uh, Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. Dude, that... What was the recent one where the guy actually had it tattooed on him? Oh, uh, John McAfee. Yeah. He, uh, for the people... And, you know, that was something that I was uh, talking with on a... For anybody that wants to talk that, uh, hear, listen to that podcast I'm talking about, here to Chew Bubblegum, the last time that those uh, guys and gal were on, we were talking about John McAfee. And we were talking about how nobody talked about it. I mean, you heard a little bit, yeah. but maybe a week's worth, something like that, and it was just swept under the rug. Even nowadays, people are still talking about Epstein. But John McAfee, nobody's talking about that dude. Nope. And for the people that, just to get y'all interested into looking into his story more, like uh, you said, he had whacked tattooed on him. Mm-hmm. So that way, if he was to ever kill himself, that would show that he didn't actually do it. And I know that it had some connection to a, uh, a a cryptocurrency that he was working on as well, and John McAfee was great at marketing. But I do. But he said himself that that was the yeah, reason he that, that he, yeah. he got that tattooed on him. And there's video of him talking about that. And also, one of my favorite interviews that was done uh, with him from all people, Adult Swim. <laughs> Yeah. Went and interviewed this dude. They, they done a two part series, and I encourage people to watch both. And I think it might have been in the second part how he was talking about that they were after him at the time. And John McAfee was the creator of the McAfee software. That if you grew up in the late nineties, early two thousands, everybody had McAfee yeah. software. People probably still have it today. And uh, he donated a bunch of stuff like computers to the government with the McAfee software. And he was able to uh, hack into the system. And the reason that he done that was just to see what they had on him. Yeah. And apparently he didn't find anything. And I'm I'm going to butcher this. Y'all have to go watch this for yourself. So I'm not just talking on my butt on this one. But he said that, like, uh, there was two officials in the government. I I forget their exact titles, and I'm not going to try to remember. But there was two officials in the government, and one was the biggest arms dealer in South America, Mm. I think it was. And the other one was like the biggest human trafficker 
in uh, the United States or something like that. I, I'm I'm getting it wrong, so the people have to go and watch for themselves. But that dude said that. And even the lady that was interviewing him said, well, we don't want to get killed, so we're probably not going to air that. And he just said, yeah, that's that's fine, whatever. And congratulations to Adult Swim to having some cojones yeah. because they left that in there. And then all of a sudden, John McAfee kills himself. Yeah. And, and you know, like you can throw all this stuff in people's face and they still won't believe <laughs> Like, like it's, oh, you're just conspiracy theorists. No. Yeah. There, and, and, and There's and, too many people just killing themselves out for nothing, you know. Yeah. But, man, I can go on and on about crazy stuff that I learned about. But, you know, even the CIA, that's the organization that coined the term conspiracy theorist. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy theory was, well, the term conspiracy theory was not a thing until the CIA made it a thing. But, you know, it's, it's, it's almost a losing battle, man, because, like, I used to go down so many rabbit holes of yeah. conspiracy theories. Well, that the, I just, the, I, like, the I drove, polish dead, oh, I went down that rabbit hole for three days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. But, like, it just, it, it gets to a point, though, man, where it, it, it's bad for your mental health. And I just finally realized, like, what are we going to do? You know? We can't do nothing about it. So no. Go with it. <laughs> but whenever, whenever they had Jeffrey Epstein... I had that one last ray of hope that, like, they got him. Justice is going to be served. That the, They're going to open up the doors, and every evil politician and person in some type of high power is going to get the shaft. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Nothing happened to anybody. He, well, I think Prince Andrew can be arrested if he comes into the United States, but all he has to do is stay in his big old royal palace, and he's fine. Mm -hmm. Did you watch that interview? No. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> if it, 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 People go check that out if you want to get back into the Jeffrey Epstein thing. But uh, Prince Andrew was somebody that was very highly connected to uh, that whole ordeal. There was pictures of him with... Now, is Andrew the one that's married to the Kentucky girl, or is that his brother? Might be his brother. I'm not okay. sure. I don't think he's... Andrew is the one still over there, right? Yeah, yeah. He. Ha oh. I think he has to be, because I think, if I'm getting this right, he will be arrested if he comes into the United States. They got that much on no. him, but... Which one is it defected from the royal family? Oh, that's a... Uh, I know the wife, Harry. Yeah, Harry. 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 And yeah. Whatever her name is. She's from Kentucky. Megan Markle's yeah. from Kentucky? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, good for you, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 but right they're, on, like, they're like, oh, let's stay over here. We're not going back because they're all crazy. Dude, I don't and blame them. They're all going to go to the pen or something, you know. I, I really don't blame them because, I mean, that the royal family is just, ever since the whole Princess Diana thing, been in some weird stuff. They are probably into weird stuff before then. But the, uh, the, the Prince Andrew thing, they had an interview with him. And I guess that they were just used to the media kind of kissing the royal family's butt yeah. and like, oh, just throw me a softball question and I'll knock it out of the park. We shake hands and the interview's over. That's probably what he was expecting. <laughs> well, uh, I forget the woman that interviewed him, and, but a big shout out to her. Mm. Buddy, she grilled him over the Epstein stuff grilled him and as it keeps going on and on you can just tell that that dude is screwed like like yeah. he is dug himself a hole and is laying in it and ever since that interview aired he has been locked up inside that royal palace and he has not been outside of it i'm gonna watch that one it is crazy and it just opens your eyes to like you know the, the whole epstein thing there's a lot of truth there and What's even scarier with that whole ordeal to me is he was just the one that was caught. Yeah. There's probably thousands of other Jeffrey Epsteins out there yeah. still doing the exact same thing that he was doing. You, you watched the movie Hostel. Yeah. I do yeah. believe that there's places in the world where that actually happens. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I totally agree, man. You know, just these uh, elite people live under a totally different set of rules, yeah. you know? And 
if, if anybody really wants to look into some weird stuff, I, I'm, I've talked about this quite a few times on the podcast, but still, I love to tell people about it. There's this place called a Bohemian Grove. Oh, yeah. Have you heard about that? Yeah. Man, if anybody doesn't think that our people in power are <clears throat> not into some weird stuff, look up Bohemian have, Grove. Have you heard about when they invited Richard Nixon? Yeah, well, Nixon was. Uh, yeah, well, Nixon was. Yeah, okay. Are you talking about the the, the what they were the the audio clip that they have of him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we can't talk about that uh, on here, but uh, people can go look that up on their own time. But Nixon was uh, photographed at a uh, Bohemian Grove, yeah. and I think that also in a book, it was either him or uh, Reagan. That said, like what they do at Bohemian Grove, they do a lot of weird stuff. But they have this one thing called Lakeside Talks, uh -huh. where they, uh, I guess, talk about ruling the world, basically. But uh, it was either Nixon or Reagan that said that his Lakeside Talk was what put him in the presidential seat. Like that's mm -hmm. what helped him get to that position. He uh -huh. credited that. And it was in one of their books. Like that's, that's, that's a legit fact. But the reason that Bohemian Grove is a weird thing to people out there wondering, they – and a big shout-out to Alex Jones. Yeah. I, I know that he's done some – he's got it wrong a few times. Yeah. The Sandy Hook ordeal was terrible. But – but he has also got it pretty spot on a few times too. And he snuck into Bohemian Grove with a camera and got a lot of this place on footage. The it, cremation of care yes. ritual. Dude, that is one of the weirdest things that I've ever seen in my life. To people what, that's wondering what that is, it is a, um, you know, like a... Effigy. A, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, it's oh, just like, like a... Well, they say it's a play that they put oh, on, yeah. basically. But what they do, and this is like the top powerful <clears throat> people in the, in the world. world. You were talking presidents, U.S. admirals, um uh, you know, Hollywood actors. And, like, I, I know that all of this sounds like a conspiracy. Yeah. That's why I hate even talking about it to some <laughs> people because they just think that you're crazy. But, no, this is an actual real thing. And uh, the, the, all these powerful people will go to this place in Northern California. Nobody's allowed in. Well, only guys are allowed in. And you have to be on the list, of course. And they do this cremation of care play where they have a human effigy that is made of sticks, they all dress up like pagans, light this effigy on fire in front of a 40-foot stone owl that they call Moloch the Owl God. And if you go down that rabbit hole, yeah. that's a whole ordeal in itself. Yeah. And they, uh, and it's, it's, it's weird, man. They, the way they talk, it's so demonic. Mm -hmm. It's creepy. And this is who's ruling the world. Yeah. <laughs> and but people still will say, "Oh, you're crazy. You're a little crazy conspiracy theorist." Like, n no, Kyle. It's yeah, it's, it's it's a real separate thing. Separate the fact from fiction, and some is fact, and that is hard facts right there. Yeah, this man. actually happens. Yeah, and see that that's that's the type of conspiracy theories that I like. The ones that have some actual truth to it if you can't present truth to me more than likely i'm not going to be interested but whenever i seen that video i was like whoa no. that's that's creepy but like we were saying earlier what you are know, we going to do about it you know they they supposedly caught the true zodiac yesterday hmm <laughs> you ain't heard about this no he died in like 2018 but i reckon it's concrete that they know who zodiac was who they it, say it's, it was? It's not any of them that was on the list. It was like another guy. He actually has the same scars, and, and he has he was at the same places and all that. But I can't remember who they said it was, but, yeah, you have to check into that. Mm, that was a weird case back yeah. then, man. It was a lot easier to kill people back in the day than it was to nowadays. Yeah. It's crazy that something like the Zodiac even happened in the first place. But And, and thank God that... The uh, the authorities have got the technology that they do nowadays because man, you heard of stuff like that and Ted Bundy yeah. and Charles Manson, which is linked to MK Ultra. If anybody wants to go down that rabbit hole, yeah. by the way, 
I, I seen a thing on Scooby Doo. I, I have saw this and heard this. I don't know if it's true or not. Was Nancy Pelosi a member of the Manson family? Really? It would make a lot of sense. <laughs> I think it's true. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows, man? I, I didn't think that uh, Manson was actually connected to MK Ultra until yeah. they presented the uh, documents and stuff that they had with him in it. Like, I, I mean, you, he was in the CIA. I bet you didn't know this. Aleister Crowley's stepdaughter or step or grandchild is Barbara Bush. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's a little bit creepy. Yeah. I mean, like the, the the people that have this power, it's all interconnected. You yeah. know, that's why you don't see just some random person really making it in Hollywood. You have to know somebody that knows yeah. somebody that probably done some terrible things to somebody. Just your last interview, you was talking to that guy. What was his name? Oh, Tony Moran. Yeah, he was talking about his sister. Why he didn't really want to be an actor is because he's seen what it done to his sister. Yeah. So, yeah. Kind of got to say you saw in Hollywood. I mean, I, you, you really do. And I think that, like, you, you hear those stories about making a deal with the devil and yada, yada, yada. Maybe that was just badly interpreted. Yeah. Maybe it meant that you had to do some. Look at the Corys, the two Corys from the 80s. Corey Ham and Corey Feldman. Yeah. Oh yeah. Man, that that's the, the the Me Too movement, that was on both sides. You yeah. know, that's something that not a lot of people talk about. It's terrible that the what the women went through. Yeah. But guys were going through that too. And Corey Feldman's story I'm surprised they didn't kill that dude off. Oh yeah. He uh he he got pretty <clears throat> out there with some of his claims. That's mm-hmm. why I'm thankful to be on this scale right here. I, I don't want to do anything past this. I, I'm comfortable right here. You see where they had a Harvey Weinstein uh, like a goblin in Lord of the Rings? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, now, and like somebody had it side by side, and I'm like, yeah, that's spitting image. <laughs> I, I'm glad that people like that are getting busted, yeah. and hopefully they get the rest of them because yeah. man that's just it's terrible what some people go through but you know I, I'm I hate Harvey Weinstein I hate what he done but I, I still love Pulp Fiction though <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a dang good movie yeah you know and, and that's that's the thing too man like a lot of the people that we idolize nowadays done terrible things that's one reason that I was always afraid to get tattoos because I like musicians and certain things, and I was always afraid if I get somebody that I really like tattooed, then it's going to come out that they <laughs> this horrible guy. <laughs> well, I mean, like, some of these are just surprising, dude. Okay, R. Kelly, of course. Yeah. That, yeah, we all seen that coming a mile away. Yeah, that, yeah, that dude done that. But whenever you hear, like, Bill Cosby, you're like, what? Bill? Yeah. Bill Cosby? Fat Albert? No. But, yeah. I still that, got, let's see, we had a Pee Wee Herman and all this other stuff went on. Well, Pee Wee, that, didn't yeah. he just do that thing in the movie theater? Yeah. I, I st- I don't, he didn't. <laughs> he, he ain't no R. Kelly. And then uh, growing up, you know, uh, watching baseball, Roger Clemens, he was like, oh, he's awesome. I last pitcher. And then, you know. Yep. Then <laughs> even Brett Favre down to. <laughs> what did Brett, Brett Favre do? Oh, <laughs> sending the sexton to the. Everybody that tried to interview him, he was just like, you know, <laughs> sexual harassing them <laughs> always. You're, you're Brett Favre, not John Stamos. You need, you need you need to calm it down there, Brett. Not that many people are interested. But we still got in Kentucky. We still got a hero that's not that's Jim Varney, Ernest. Yeah, there's nothing ever wrong with Ernest. <laughs> we hope. We hope it don't we come hope. out. That, yeah, yeah, and that's. Well, whenever you like, most of the time, like the good country folk that make it big, you don't really hear much of that every once in a while. See, like some of them are just honest with it, you know, yeah. like that they're not that they're people like R. Kelly, but there's somebody like Johnny Paycheck, yeah, who's actually shot people, you yeah, know? <laughs> and, and and writes music about Billy it. Billy Joe Shaver, he yep. asked the guy, "Where do you want it?" Before he shot him, 
Yep. <laughs> See, at least they're they're honest about yeah. it. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've shot people. Yeah. yeah. We wrote a song about it. Yeah. It's the ones in Hollywood that go to Bohemian Grove that. Yeah. Like Tom Hanks. I don't trust that dude. Love for. <laughs> Love Forrest Gump, but I don't uh, trust Tom Hanks. He left the country for a reason. Yep. And that was right around the time yep. that everything was hitting the fan. Mm -hmm. Who knows, man? That's why I'm thankful that we have this, the entertainment community that we have around here. Because most of the people, 8 out of 10, are just good people that want to see everybody else do good. You have those that are that have a big head. Or whatever. But eight out of ten of them around here, good folks. Mm -hmm. And I would much rather just hang out with people like you and the rest of the people that we have here on the podcast than spend time with anybody in Hollywood because I don't want to be no invited to no Bohemian Grove or <laughs> anything like that. It makes you thankful to live in the to live in the mountains yeah. that we do. Safe. Away from people like Jeffrey Epstein. Ten years down the road, we don't go crazy and try to kill ourselves. Yeah. Or be killed by someone else. <laughs> mm. Boom. But, Eddie, thank you for this, man. This All has been welcome. fun. I didn't know it was going to go down this rabbit hole, but <laughs> here we are. Here we are. Hey, hopefully some people learned some stuff. And, and next time your crazy conspiracy theorist friend starts going off the wall, don't be so quick to judge because yeah. you never know. But uh, for everybody that wants to, uh, this is a, a great little plug for the Walnut Festival. All right. <laughs> yeah. MK Ultra and the Walnut <laughs> Festival. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about all this, man. But hey, we, we'll take all the crowds in. <laughs> <laughs> but for the people that want to check out the Walnut Festival, everything they have going on, and also the music and shows of Eddie Jenkins, how do they do that? Eddie Jenkins Music on Facebook. There's an old one that just says Eddie Jenkins, but I no longer use that. So Eddie Jenkins music, or they can send me a friend request. Uh, now that it's kind of turning down into winter territory, we, you know, the gigs are slowing down. So if you want to book us, just hit me up on Facebook. Uh, I play with uh, the Midnight Promise, and I also play with Eddie Jenkins and the 606 Sound. So just hit us up. And for the Walnut Festival, where do people go to check that out? Uh, it will be contact me or, let's see, the board members are... Paul Bailey, uh, John Arnett, Marlene Van Hoos. I don't think they have a Facebook page for the Walnut Festival, so just contact me if they want any info. Sounds good. Looking forward to it, man. Y'all have uh, quite the setup this year. I think everybody's going to enjoy it, all those that come down there, and encourage everybody to go check it out. Sallysville yeah. is a great place to be. And, Eddie, thank you for everything, brother. Thank you. See you next week, folks. Boom. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that was wild.